Good morning and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to normal as I'm going to be completely in an urban setting because I'm going to do a Singapore River history walk. Basically what I'm going to do is just walk along the banks of the Singapore River and introduce a few landmarks that I find interesting in that I mean that their history is quite interesting um, yeah, I mean there's lots to choose from and I'm trying to choose the less well-known landmarks um, to introduce to people who may not know anything about them so that's the idea for today um, and just remember all you history buffs I'm an amateur historian all this stuff I tried to learn myself so I might make one or two mistakes and I appreciate corrections if I get anything wrong and um, as today's video features mainly colonial um, landmarks then I am trying to stick with that theme by eating you know I like to eat right by eating only British style food. We're here at our first landmark which is the Kavanagh Bridge. Built in 1868 it was named after the last governor of the East India Company William Orphur Kavanagh if that's how you pronounce it. Anyway he had endeared himself to the residents and merchants of Singapore by improving governance of the colony across the board. He was also popular because he had put Singapore's then growing population of Indian convicts to good use, employing them on several important infrastructure projects at the time, including Fort Canning, St Andrew's Cathedral and the Astana. Cabinet Bridge is the oldest bridge still standing in Singapore and certainly one of the most visually appealing, even though it's not very practical. In 1909 it was declared off limits to vehicles and carts weighing more than 300 weight, that's just 150 kilograms, while its low clearance meant that for many years bum boats could only pass underneath the bridge at ebb or low tide. Certainly not the best situation when the Singapore River over which it crossed was at the time the centre of the city's waterborne trade. Now just a stone's throw from my first landmark is the second landmark on today's list. This thing behind me, the Dalhousie Obelisk. A landmark with a contentious history, it was built to commemorate the 1850 visit of James Brune Ramsey, Earl of Dalhousie and then Governor General of India. The obelisk was erected as a sign of hope that the much revered figure would help to upgrade Singapore in line with its growing status as a trade hub, hopes that were reflected in the inscription on the obelisk. Although the lack of action on that front in the wake of the visit meant that those hopes were eventually dashed. So much so that in 1885 there were calls for the obelisk to be demolished. Those calls were eventually placated but the unwanted status of the obelisk is kind of reflected in its nomadic nature. Relocated no less than three times over the years for various reasons it was moved again for a fourth and final time in 1911 to its present position here in front of the Asian Civilizations Museum.
Where I'm standing right now was once an island known as Palau Saigon and for many years there was a bridge here bearing the same name. The simple metal bridge gained notoriety during the battle for Singapore when a freak series of events saw it catch fire during a Japanese bombing raid. A ruptured oil pipe and a river fire saw the metal girders of the bridge engulfed in flames for several hours. A rare sight indeed that attracted the attention of hundreds of locals. The bridge, also formerly known as the Butcher Bridge, was demolished in 1986 to make way for the Central Expressway, while the island was merged into the riverbank in 1991 near the site of the River Place condo. But the name lives on, as a new Palau Saigon bridge was built here, just 400 meters down the river, right next to the Warehouse Hotel. Which conveniently brings me on to my next subject, go-downs. Anyone who has read up on Singapore's history will at one point or another have come across the term go-down. The exact origin of the term is disputed, although many historians believe that it originated from the Malay word gadong, meaning a warehouse or place to keep things. Godowns played an important part in trade, storing goods from ships anchored in Singapore Harbour until the trade winds were blowing in the right direction and the goods could be moved on to their ultimate destination. They were also used to store goods going to or coming from Peninsula Malaya. Obviously, as the centre of Singapore's trade, the riverbanks here were once lined with hundreds of go-downs. And despite rapid development, quite a few of them have survived until the present day. The warehouse hotel behind me is one such example. And there are several others near Robertson Quay. While these go-downs, if you could see them at 17, 19 and 21 Jack Kim Street, may be more familiar to you, as they were once home to Zook Nightclub. Okay, so we've come to the end of this morning's Riverside History Walk. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you've even learnt something too. Um, right now I'm heading off back into the city where I'm going to meet my fam for some lunch. Traditional British lunch. So, we'll see you over there. As you can see, we went to Lad and Dad for lunch. It was our first visit and I for one was looking forward to it after hearing very good things about this place. And I have to say, we were not disappointed. My wife and daughter shared a fry up, my son got fish and chips, while I went for a scotch egg and posh chips. After trying all the dishes, I have to say, everything from the battered fish to the sausage tasted just like home, while the homemade mushy peas were also a pleasant and delicious surprise. My scotch egg was amazing too, so fresh, with a runny yolk and a bed of pickled red cabbage, a really outstanding dish. The only criticism I have, and it's a very minor one, is that they could perhaps substitute the hash browns for mushrooms and tomatoes, and the posh chips are in fact poutine, but still, it all tasted great. As it says on the menu, no frills, no bollocks, if you want great British pub grub, then this is definitely the place to go. Okay guys, we're done for the day. I recorded this before lunch, just in case you're wondering. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And finally, if you're really keen, then you can always click the bell for notifications. That's it for today. Take it easy and see you next time. Over and out.